members of Ramsey Solutions, it's The Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Rachel Cruz, number one best-selling author, host of The Rachel Cruz Show, co-host of the Smart Money Happy Hour on the Ramsey Network, and my daughter is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. We're going to talk about you right in front of you. Dwight starts off this hour in Seattle. Hi, Dwight. How are you? I'm doing okay. How are you, Dave? Better than I deserve. What's up? So I'm going through divorce right now. Um, I've got no money saved. My bank accounts are actually negative. I'm about 40000 in debt, and I'm just trying to figure out where to start. I've only recently started listening to your podcast. Mm. I'm sorry. How long were you married? Uh, five years. Mm. What's your income? So right now I work at the post office. Um, I make, and I also have a side job at Applebee's. I do once a week on my day off from the post office. So I make roughly five to six thousand a month right now. Mm-hmm. Why do you have no money? Everything was basically going into my past living situation. And then we were kind of arguing for a while, and I kind of came to head, and they kicked me out. And so I went and had to sign a lease, which ate up most of my last paycheck. Mm. Okay. Dwight, is the divorce, is it final? Not yet. Not yet, okay. No. Um, how old are you? 24. Okay. I'll be 25 on Thanksgiving Day. Wow. Mm. Okay. Um, the, 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 we've done, I've done, and Ramsey has done crisis financial counseling, Dwight, for almost 40 years. And one of the things I've learned to do when I'm in these kinds of situations or when I'm helping somebody like you that's in a situation like this is we need to, uh, boil this down to, um, the next right three or four things and not worry about the big stuff off in the distance right now. Because right now you've got some very immediate things that you need to address, and I really don't care about your retirement investing right now. You follow me? It's not a big deal. Yeah. We'll, get to, we'll get to that later. But, and I, uh, but right now we need stuff like a positive bank balance uh, and no more, no more hot checks going out the door, no, no more overdraft fees going out the door. Right now we need to make sure the lights and the water are on in the apartment and the apartment's paid. And um, you, it sounds like you got that started. But, um, but, so we're taking care of food, lights and water, shelter, transportation. How much is your car payment? So I actually don't have a car right now. You don't have a car. Okay. How are you getting around? Uh, where I'm living has a public bus system that is free of charge. Okay. All right. And, um, so your you and your soon to be ex had one car. So, technically, I have a car, but it's in Texas, which doesn't help me. Okay. Um, so, she's in Texas? It, no, she's here. with It It was a very sudden transition up here uh, due to the given situation. And so, we I just kind of flew up here. Uh Okay. Where, where, why is your car, your car? You were living in Texas before. Correct. Okay. So you just jetted out, literally. Okay. Correct. And uh, the car is parked where? At your family or with her? My family on my grandmother's property. On your grandmother's property. You have a relative that can bring you your car. It's honestly not worth bringing up here. Um, it is. It's more than walking. It would cost more than it's worth in gas to bring up here. So the car is not worth $400. So the problem is it only gets eight miles per gallon. It would cost roughly $2,000 in fuel to drive it up here. And do you think that's what it's worth? Uh, I wouldn't even say it's worth that. Okay. So do you have a relative that will take the car for you and sell it today? I can... Biggest issue is trying to find a buyer. No, it's not. They can sell it today. It's a two thousand dollar car. 
Just go to the local junkyard, go to the tote the note lot, and sell it today. You need money. Okay. You are broke. You have a car sitting there. Okay? So what's happened is, is there's a, so much freaking drama in your life that your brain's not even functioning. You've you're, you're got a lot of fog because these are very clear things you should do. Immediately, you should sell this car. Immediately, you need to take the money and find you a $2,000 car and buy one at a garage sale in Seattle so that you're not walking. And then immediately, you need to get two more extra jobs. And then immediately, we're going to start stacking up some cash and put some buffer around you. You are not on the edge. You are falling off the cliff. We've got to get you back up on top. The lease you signed, Dwight, for living, is it, is it reasonable for what you're making right now? So it's eight fifty a month, and it includes utilities and internet. Okay. That's great. Yeah, you can handle that on 5000 Yeah. Okay. And your uh, job is in Seattle that makes 5000 So I actually, I don't actually live in Seattle. I live uh, out on one of the islands about two, two and a half hours from Seattle. It's just the closest place to me. Okay. So the, but, but my point is you, you're making $5,000 working for the post office there. Yeah. Okay. Not in Texas. Hello? Uh, yeah, correct. Not in Texas. Okay. All right. So th what you've got to do is break this down, hon, a and a little bitty baby steps. About three or four right things to do right now. Turn the car into cash right now. Get some more jobs right now. Delivering anything. Cutting dog's hair. Walking dogs. Piling up dog's hair. I don't care what you do. Cut grass. Uh, blow leaves. Get you a leaf blower. Rich people are afraid of leaves. Get you, you know, uh, put up Christmas trees. I don't care. <laughs> but right now, you're going to start going to make some money because right now, the reason you, you're traumatized and talking to you, your, your verbal pattern says trauma. And so you're having trouble even staying with me when we're talking through these things. So you have, and, and that's all due to you having you falling off the edge of the cliff and you're terrorized by your financial situation. And I don't blame you for that, uh, but the way to fix it is to immediately start stacking cash from any source that you can that's legal and moral. Immediately. Spending nothing. But piling it up, piling it up, piling it up, and let's take care of food, shelter, clothing, transportation, and utilities. Yeah, and any expenses, Dwight, you can cut that we just, you get in the habit of just having, whether it's subscriptions, memberships, like restaurant, like whatever the thing is, like whatever you can cut, finding that margin is going to start to give you peace. Even yeah. if it's 30 bucks here or there at this point, that's huge. So no, like you know, go no. through and cut things. Too. Exactly. No car payment, $850 rent that includes utilities. Dude, you're making 5,000 plus a thousand with Applebee's on the weekend. That's $6,000. That's a $5,000 spread. If you don't blow that on the weekends doing stupid butt stuff. So you've got to ta tack this together and start stacking some cash. Hey folks, you know that sinking feeling when you make an offer on a house you love and then you hear there's another offer? You need the Churchill Mortgage Home Buyer Edge. Super fast pre-approval and a secured interest rate. Plus a $5,000 seller guarantee gives your offer the best chance of being accepted. The Home Buyer Edge from Churchill gives you an advantage over those other guys. Go to churchillmortgage.com today to learn more. a bunch of new wonderful things come out this fall. Dr. John Deloney, about a month ago, we launched his uh, second book. It comes out at number one, his second number one bestseller, uh, Building a Non-Anxious Life. Uh, yesterday, we John launched George Camel's new book, Breaking Free from Broke. And pre-sale, the book will actually come out in January, on January 16th, but um, a 
bazillion of you bought the book yesterday. Thank you for that. We appreciate it. Uh, the pre-sales help us a bunch. It helps George a bunch, helps the marketing and everything. And uh, this coming Tuesday, Rachel, the mother of three of my grandchildren, has uh, done a new children's book, her first children's book. I'm glad for what I have. And uh, it is a book about contentment, obviously. Contentment. Yep. And it is uh, the illustrations are world class because the illustrator that we brought in is yeah. world class. Lauren's amazing. Yep. Lauren. Lauren Gallegos. Gallegos. Okay. Yep. I didn't know. I, I knew I was going to mess up the name, but yeah. Um, but the book is um, comes out Tuesday, and we've already sold thousands and thousands of them in pre-sale. Just some of you've heard about it on Rachel's Instagram and so forth. But the uh, you know the quality of these illustrations and the quality of the message for the little ones is i can't get it open it's stiff it's brand new yeah, brand new is uh absolutely incredible and so uh just to read to the uh the bedtime story age yep uh and so we've got a bunch of those in the ramsey clan right now so papa dave and mimi will be reading this uh reading rachel's own book to uh her own kids and her cousins yes their, their cousins i guess i know i know if you're a parent I got two of them tonight i got charles tonight yes and, Eli tonight. and then i just got a text from mom y'all are gonna have all of them i think tomorrow oh night. how so, wonderful all seven <laughs> Thanks. Yay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if you're a parent of of kids, I'm like, it's just such a it's such a weird time to be a parent, especially when you're like through the lens of money. And you're trying to teach them about money because everything's on your phone. You're buying things on Amazon. Things just show up at the door. Uh, you know, I mean, even cards, even debit cards like aren't being used as much. It's all just Apple Pay. I mean, like it's just it is wild how transactions and seeing money not being even exchanged, right? But you're paying for stuff and your kids don't see it. And so... It's like magic. Things just appear. Oh, yeah, my appear. kids think that, like... If you're Am five years old, stuff just appears. Oh, my three-year-old was like, "Let's we should just Amazon it, Mom. And I was like, oh, oh no. gosh. Yep, oh, that's oh, like gosh, a thing yeah. now. So yeah. I wanted them to fully embrace this idea. And it's something we talk about all the time, is that, like, it's okay to have stuff. Like, we can have toys and you can want things. But that excitement that you have with that new toy, it fades so quickly. And so if that is what you're depending your joy and your happiness on, it fades. It, you're, it has to come from somewhere bigger. And so teaching them that, yeah, your stuff is not going to fulfill you the way you think it does. And so as a parent, um, it's, a, it's a shorter book. So you're welcome, parents. And it rhymes. It's, it's just a sweet lesson in contentment. So I'm, I'm glad for, for what, what I, I have. That's right. So pre-sale. Is you can now. buy it now at Ramsey Solutions, and we'll ship them Tuesday. That's what it amounts to. Yes. So uh, they'll start they'll start being on the shelves officially on Tuesday, and you'll find them wherever great kids' books are sold, and certainly RamseySolutions.com. In other news, on the other side of the spectrum, Mint is shutting down. The uh, best, the largest budgeting app. Our every dollar is the best budgeting app by far. <laughs> it's uh, but there's about you know there's about four or five people in this space uh, of budgeting apps that are uh, of size. We're certainly one of them with every dollar. Mint has been the big dog for a while. Uh, Intuit uh, owns it. Uh, they bought a few years ago Credit Karma, and they've been using Mint as a feeder to Credit Karma. They were using using a free budgeting tool with Mint, and they just wear you out inside of Mint to get you to take on debt products and to worry about your credit score with Credit Karma, and they're always peddling you credit cards and everything else. And apparently they uh, gave up on the budgeting thing. So Mint is shutting down. Mint, the budgeting app owned by Intuit, is shutting down. Intuit announced on Tuesday that Mint will get absorbed into Intuit's other service, Credit Karma, when it officially goes away on January the 1st. It's not clear whether Credit Karma will get the budgeting features that Mint is known for. Actually, it is clear because on a support page on Credit Karma's website, Intuit says the new experience in Credit Karma does not offer the ability to set monthly and category budgets. There we go. So it's go. not their credit karma has got an experience, but it's not a budgeting experience. So uh, we invite all of you that were on Mint uh, to come check out Every Dollar. It's free to check it out, and if you want the bank connectivity, there's a small fee to do that uh, for the uh, further enhanced experience with Every Dollar. Every Dollar is by far the most robust, elegant. Um, budgeting app out there it was it's a lot better than mint was to say the least but um mint is 100 percent free 
uh, Intuit also owns some of the connectivity software that uh, connects to banks. And uh, so we actually used to, when every dollar first started, we used to rent their connectivity for our connectivity. And we moved off of their uh, platform, thank goodness, because now we'd be screwed like you people that are in Mint. You got all your budgeting stuff in Mint now. So uh, you can come on over to every dollar. We welcome you. And uh, my goodness. We're excited to uh, it's welcome. It's kind of a big deal in the budget in our world. Some people may be like, oh, okay. But I'm like, Well, they, but paid, they paid $170 million for this. They went into it, bought it a few years ago, yep. uh, as a, uh, purely as a lead magnet. It, right. It's there just to draw customers into their debt products like Credit Card and into mm-hmm. the credit cards. And so Intuit bought, paid almost $200 million for it. And then, um, gosh, I, I don't know how many years ago that was. It's probably 10 or so years ago. But... Um, they should have called me. I would have bought it from them, but oh well, not for one hundred seventy million. Like, I don't know. Wouldn't have paid them that. Wouldn't have paid them that far. But before you shut it down, and get nothing. I'd give you something, you know. And uh, so, but anyway, y'all can come over. We'd we don't love need to it have though. You. We got every dollar. Well, I, we don't need it, but I'd love to help all those people. Yeah. And yeah. so that's the thing. So yeah, any of you that are there, spread the word uh, that every dollar still is the. It's the only one of the top budgeting apps that does have a free feature that you can just jump into it for free. So uh, uh, I recommend the premium. It's much better because when you connect to your bank, the transactions show up automatically and you just drop them into your budget. It's much better. It's worth a few dollars to do that. But uh, we have to pay for that service. So you have to pay us for that service. That's how that works. So, But um, it's such a, um, especially for those of you listening that are kind of newer to all of this, I'm telling you, getting in the rhythm of budgeting, it gives you that level of control because money can feel so out of control if you don't have a plan, if you don't know what's going on. And it just feels like this like mystery when things are just in your head. I think they are magnified, the fear, the disillusion, all of it. And so having facts down and seeing your numbers and just knowing, knowing what the month is, knowing what you're planning to do in food for groceries and restaurants and, you know, kids you know, Christmas presents coming up. We have a we have a Christmas line item in our budget for this month because we're going to start buying Christmas gifts. I'm like, there's just something about having that control. And you guys, I mean, I and I do literally open up every dollar every single day. And I'm a free spirit spender. So like, I'm probably the least likely to be the one that like loves budgeting. But every dollar has just been in this rhythm for me. And you track transactions, and you know if, what's going on. I'm like, it's just, it is the, it's the, it's the first thing to get started. Like, if even you if you're in this, a freak out zone, it yes. takes a lot of the freak out away. I almost wanted to tell Elliot that where I'm like, you'll know where your money's going if you if you do every dollar, like do a budget. Yeah. And it just gives you this sense of control. And it does make you say no at times. Mm-hmm. And we all hate that. Well, we don't it, want it. It makes you, but it, you know live. that you should na- say no. Yes. It doesn't say no. That's true. That's true. That's true. You know, you are saying no to you because you want to say yes to you later. And, and that's a, you're making that. a decision on purpose instead of by chaos. Mm-hmm. Here's the weird thing. The opposite of good times or it, the thing that is more stressful than bad times is not knowing. Yes. Not knowing where you are is much more anxiety inducing than knowing where you are and knowing in detail that it's bad. And that you can get out of it, right? Even, then but you can even, create if, the even plan. if it's bad, knowing is less stressful yeah. than, oh, I have no idea. Because the drama gets all twisted up in your head and you do a little mm-hmm. drama queen dance between your ears and blow everything out of proportion. <laughs> And so, but when you write it down, when you put it down, you go, okay, I got enough for food. I got enough for lights and water. I I can pay the car payment. I can pay the rent and the the mortgage. Oh, so I'm only stressed about these three things, not instead of 38 things. Yeah, isn't that interesting? This is The Ramsey Show. Hey, if you're in over your head with student loans and tired of getting calls from collection agencies, if private student loan debt is taking away your financial peace and you don't see any way out, 
you need Y Refi. They're not a debt settlement company and they're not connected to a bank. Y Refi refinances defaulted private student loans that other places won't touch and gives you a custom loan built for you based on your ability to pay. So when you refinance your private student loan debt with Y Refi, you'll have a payment you can afford with a low fixed interest rate you couldn't get anywhere else to help you stick to your budget and work the debt snowball. And you can save thousands of dollars. To learn more about this custom refinancing option and a lump sum payoff option you could qualify for after 24 months, call 844-2-RAMSEY or go to yrefi.com slash Ramsey. Rachel Cruz, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author. My daughter is my co-host today. Kara is with us in Newark, New Jersey. Hi, Kara. How are you? Hi, Dave and Rachel. I'm doing well. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm just a little bit nervous. That's okay. Oh, We've never lost a patient. What you got? You're good, Kara. <laughs> so actually, it's kind of funny. Um, I tried to get in last week to call, but um, I just couldn't get through. And I just want to really express gratitude to the screener for letting me be on today. Um, it's, the timing is very funny um, because basically uh, eight years ago, my boyfriend and I moved in together. And I um, ended up accidentally getting pregnant. And we basically just reacted to life. <laughs> we, you know, just everything that came up and, we, you know, re reaction, 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 finance, finance. Uh, here we sit today. And I'm, I'm very blessed. We have, you know, um, two very healthy, beautiful little girls and a home. But we also have $100,000 of various debt and a mortgage and coincidentally we had been planning this for a little bit but we're actually going to town hall tonight to get our marriage certificate and to move forward as a legally married couple oh um, congratulations well congrats thanks. that's awesome Exciting. thank you so much yeah no we, we we never like not planned on getting married it just you know when you're you've got you know two kids 18 months apart it's you know like John you Delaney just didn't says, plan on anything <laughs> and yes, yes, we didn't plan it. And we, you know, I have to say we ended up okay. Like I said, we're healthy. We have a beautiful home, this and that. But like, we're ready to do, you Good. know, we've done things our way yeah. for so long and we're ready to do things the right way. Well, I'm so, happy for you. Congratulations. How can we help you? So I guess my question was, I'm a newer-ish listener. Um, and I just, I, I understand the practical of, okay, yeah, you go to the bank, you 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 know, you have a joint bank account, but I would just love to hear your thoughts on combining finances for the first time as, you know, as a couple. I know there's probably a lot of people out there who are like me, yeah. Um, yeah. Who've, you know, been shacking up as, you know, you were saying, but, uh, I, you know, what is your advice on taking that step and combining finances and moving forward yeah. That way. Well, I think it's a great question because, yeah, combining the finances happens when you are legally married. So just like what you're doing is exactly right, um, just from so many different stances. Um, so I think, yeah, the I mean, the yeah, the logistics of it, you know, of getting a joint bank account, you guys combining that, uh, budgeting together, you know, all of that is is pretty, you know, in a sense, self-explanatory. But I think the bigger underlying picture of all of that is knowing that you are on the same team with the value system around money. And so I think what happens with a lot of couples is one feels like being that they're being controlled by one spouse, one spouse goes and spends whatever they want. Um, one wants to go on vacation while one wants to upgrade the car, you know, so there's just all these different things pulling at a couple. And so as much as you guys can be on the same page with just your values and sitting down and saying, hey, you know, it could be something as simple as like, what are the five things that we believe about money? What are the five principles we want to live by? What are the things that we want to see as our family 
that we want goals, values, like all of those kind of conversations. And, you know, and it can look like, hey, we don't want to have debt. We, you know, maybe a goal is we're going to get out of debt. And a value is that we're not going to use debt in our family. Maybe it's that for these girls, you know, we have a goal to maybe help pay for their college when they're 18. And that's a goal we're going to shoot for. You may want to model generosity before them. We want to be givers. Yes. We want to, and what our does family that wants like? to be generous. We want yeah. to be a generous family. Yeah. So combining it, you know, I think the value system, combining those together uh, is really important. And then also to know Kara, you know, and I know you know this because you've been with him for eight years, but, you know, people are opposites too. So like forever and ever, amen, my husband will always love having four Excel sheets looking at all different parts of our money all the time. And I don't want to look at those, you know, even though I'm the one that teaches about money every day. I'm like, I don't want to, but that will always be him. And that will always be me. And that's okay. He's the nerd. She's the free spirit. Yeah, We're going to have different interests in our involvement to the detail of it. But overall, as our family, we see ourselves as one and we're moving in the same direction from a value standpoint. And then the tactical side does play in that I think is important that you guys, yeah, you you see yourselves as one income, that it's not just his income, your income, that together we are yeah. this family, we are one in that. You and change, You change your pronouns. Change the pronouns, sit down and do a budget we, together. We have $100,000 of debt. We yeah. have a household income of X. We are doing this, not his truck my truck. Now we still call it his car, my car at my house because it's the one that Sharon drives. But we understand that we own those cars. And um, I've actually owned a car that she has not, has never driven. I've owned it three years until the other night. And she finally drove the little sports car home. Oh, funny. And I was scared to death, uh, but uh, yeah, but she, she She's drove a better it. better driver so than you. I couldn't breathe. No, but, yeah, but it's still our car, right? And so, yeah, you got to change your pronouns and you're going to put the whole thing our income into this account, we're going to take care of our bills, address our fears, address our dreams, and make sure they're aligned with our values. What this forces you all to do is to reconcile the differences in the way you were brought up, the differences in the way you view the world. One's a nerd, one's a free spirit. One's a man, one's a woman. They see things differently. Uh, the differences in these things are have to be reconciled. It forces you to do that. So it forces you to deepen your relationship when you combine your accounts. So it's an excellent question, given the uh, momentous occasion that is today for you. Thank you. I, I, yeah, I am. I'm resonating with all of that. I am definitely the, the nerd, I guess, you know, I'm, yeah, yeah I, you made I, this I phone call. For, yeah, <laughs> you well, called the Ramsey show on the day you're getting married <laughs> and you want to know about money. You're definitely the nerd. <laughs> Free spirit would have yeah. never called today. <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. So great. And Kara, I, I'm the nerd. I would have done that. I'm planning out everything Kara, all the time. we're going to give you a wedding gift. Ah, there we gonna go. And we're going to give you Financial Peace University and Every Dollar Premium together because you guys sit down and go through these nine lessons together. Uh, join a class. They're doing classes now by season of life. So you guys can do the newlyweds, a bunch of newlyweds in there. Um, but do that. Go through this because this that will give you guys the, a common language too, especially when you do something together like that, where you're watching these videos, you're going through these exercises. Do that together because that's a great foundation. And then every dollar premium, that's just, it's yeah. amazing. How old are your babies? Uh, seven and five. Okay. We're also going to send you Rachel's oh, yeah. brand new book. I'm glad for what I have for the five-year-old. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're the first. Really that's the first one of those we've ever given I'm away. I'm so glad. Yes. What a great wedding gift. Very cool. Thank you. All Thanks. right. You hang on. Uh, we'll have Austin pick up. And since he was so nice to you before, now he's even going to be nicer and <laughs> give you a bunch of free stuff. So um, congrats, Kara. Yeah. And I just appreciate you even asking that question. And especially given your situation, you guys have been together for eight years. You could have legally had the document and kept living as you did, but you're feeling this shift of what marriage does mm -hmm. of, oh mm -hmm. my gosh, there's this level of unity that I want and I want something different. And you guys, you said you had like a hundred thousand dollars in debt and a mortgage and all of this, right? So you're kind of at this cusp of like, okay, this is a new season. It's a new, it's a new life for you guys. This is one of those mile marker points yeah. that you can put in your story and say, okay, this it. No, in November, we got married. We started changing the way we're handling money. And that's going to trickle into other parts of your life yeah. too, Kara, which I'm excited about about for it's you guys. In increase communication. One of the few things you can find a, a total agreement on when surveyed ladies that are married, they ask, what would you like more? And they said, 
of the ladies surveyed. 97, that's all of them. So you know what they want? More communication. To which the guy said, huh. <laughs> right? And so, um, yeah, but more communication. You want to, let me give you a great communication tool where you actually communicate feelings and you actually communicate things that matter and passions and dreams. It's called a budget. It forces you to communicate about every detail of your freaking life. And so Schedules, it's a it's a communication stuff, tool. school stuff. I mean, oh yeah, it's it all, all in there. comes out there. Where are we going for Thanksgiving? Which parents' house? It's in the budget. <laughs> it makes you makes you decide. This is the Ramsey Show. Well, you've all played the telephone game. The first person whispers a message to the second person who whispers it to the third and so on around the table until the original message has completely changed. Multiply that confusion by 100 if you run a business with different software systems that don't talk to each other. That's why there's NetSuite by Oracle. In the early days of Ramsey, we were using different systems for all of our business units. We needed one single source for accurate data. NetSuite was the software we used to optimize and take us to the next level. NetSuite gave us the visibility into all of our numbers so that we could communicate across departments and plan ahead better. And as we grew, it scaled with us. NetSuite worked for Ramsey, and it will make a difference for your business too. Join the more than 34,000 customers who trust NetSuite to help make them smarter and make better decisions and level up their operations. To learn more, get a free product tour at netsuite.com slash Ramsey. That's netsuite.com slash Ramsey. Rachel Cruz, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author, my co-host today. Brett is in Providence, Rhode Island. Hi, Brett. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi. Hi. How can we help? Um, so I we are moving, um, and we're selling the house, and we're making a profit on it. And um, recently, I have been seeing your show on like uh, little clips, and I've been changing my mindset of maybe, you know, having lease vehicles isn't the best and smartest uh, decision I've ever made. And uh, also, though, there's we have a plan to use a good portion of the money uh, from selling the house to use that as a down payment uh, after a year of us renting because we don't know the area. We're mm -hmm. moving down to Orlando. Cool. So we're trying to get a, you know, it didn't feel right sight unseen just to purchase a house type okay. thing. Mm -hmm. So we're like, we'll rent there, Smart. get a feel for the area, you know, know where, where we want to be school wise. That sounds wise. Kids. Um, so how so, much is, how much are you going to get out of the house? What's going to be the cash in your hand? I'm guessing anywhere between 50 and 60,000. Okay. And what's it take to pay off your cars? Um, to pay off, we want to be able to pay off both of them. If uh, so, I have two you. You, years you owe more than sixty thousand dollars on your cars. Uh, well, they're leases, so I know, but they have, they have a payoff. Buy them. They have an early buyout provision. Right. If you call and ask for the early buyout, have you done that yet? Uh, yeah. So I know the early buyout for my truck is forty nine, and uh, the other vehicle is probably around, I would guess, around like forty. Or so. Wow. You're deep in some cars, dude. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, what know, is the, uh, I, what's I your household income? Very, but, um, I do 180 a year. Okay. All right. 
Well, a good rule of thumb, if you want to build wealth, is to not have more than half your annual income tied up in things with motors and wheels. You are right on that bubble. Okay? Yeah. Um, you're not over it, but you got a lot of car debt. Um, and you ain't got much home equity, which is kind of weird with that income. How long have you been making that kind of money? Um, I've been making... Uh, I made 160 last year. Yeah. Um, so, you know, a little bit of a bump. Um, I've only been making this money since like about, I would say, 2021. Okay. Um, uh, just a few years. That makes sense bought, then. Okay. And yeah. how old are you? I mean, we bought this house. Oh, I'm 35. Okay. Yeah, I bought this house with a VA loan. Mm-hmm. So we did no money down. Yeah. Down I can home. tell. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I uh, uh, purchased the house, and in two years, somehow we're selling it um, for a profit, which is just craziness. But yeah. Brett, I love, I love vehicles. I'm a car nut. Um, mathematically, uh, as a financial person, I hate them because they're the largest thing that we all buy that goes down in value, and they go down in value rapidly. And so you've got a lot of money tied up in um, – things that go down in value. Uh, and, and so here's what I would do if I woke up in your shoes. Um, I would sell some of these vehicles, if not both one of them, if not both of them, and move down in vehicle to have less money tied up in things going the wrong way so that I can put more money into something that's going up in value, which is the purchase of your home. Uh, so I, I would pay off one and sell one and get you an inexpensive car to drive and pile up cash during this year for your down payment uh, if, I, if I were in your shoes. Uh, if Do you have you, any money saved, Brett? Um, no, um, because obviously with moving and expenses, um, our savings has been bur- burned, yeah. paying for you know transportation of one of the vehicles because yeah. we're driving, but we can't drive both vehicles and you know paying for a pod to transport yeah, but all of that, but still, you're making almost $200,000 a year, and you had no money. You just had ten, fifteen thousand bucks to make the move was all, and you burned it. So you've got yeah. to get some money back in your hands because you put it all into vehicles. And so uh, I want you to make one hundred and seventy-five, two hundred thousand dollars $200,000 a year and have some money, uh, not be broke. And, and that's what I, if I were, if that's what I would like for you, you know, I love you. I want you to win. And that's what I want for you. So if I were in your shoes, as much as I love a nice truck, and I've got a, I've got a Ford Raptor that is an absolute beast. It's an amazing vehicle. I love cars. Um, and, and so, but, but I'm not going to love them so much that they eat me alive. And they, yours are eating you up, man. It, yeah. Because it's the, 90 grand and yeah, you got $90,000 tied up and your house had nothing down and you barely had enough cash to move. And this is, and you make a lot of money. So I want you to make a lot of money and have some and, and not be feeding these beasts. So, um, I'm probably selling the expensive one, paying off the inexpensive one, getting a, a, a very inexpensive cash car down in Orlando. And so in Orlando, so you don't have to even transport them. Yeah. Probably too late. They're probably already moved, but the, uh, but either way, and just be, be free of all this. It's because if you're sitting there with no car payments and you're renting, you can stack some serious cash for your yep. down payment now. Yep. And, um, and then and don't just be afraid. draw a line in the sand that says, I pay cash for things from now on. Yeah. And don't be afraid to rent for two years. If you guys have to, to, yeah. cause you felt the pain of putting nothing down. Yeah. And not having a lot of equity. So even if you guys kind of slow pace it into that move, that's okay too. But if you got no payments in the world and you make 200, stack a hundred. I mean, live yeah. on, I mean, oh darn, I have to live on a hundred thousand in Orlando. I don't know if I can do that or not. Of course you can. People do it every day. So, I mean, yeah, stack a hundred in a year, you know, uh, and, and that's a pretty strong downstroke for a house. Mm-hmm. Uh, that'll put you in a good place or wait two years and stack 200. Yeah. That'd be pretty neat. This is the kind of thing you can do when you're not giving it all to the car company in the form of a fleece. So Brett, you'd already come to these conclusions, but I probably took you uh, about four notches along the radical steps. Uh, the, you know, took you a little bit more radical than you wanted to go when you called in. Be careful what you wish for when you call the show, <laughs> boys and girls. But um, that's what I would do, man. Uh, just just because here's the thing. For a long time, I drove cars I really hated because they were crappy and they were hoopties. 
and I drove like no one else so that later I can drive anything I freaking want to. You live like no one else so that later you can live and give like no one else. And so you, you pay a price to win. You yep. sacrifice to get yourself in a position. Because making that kind of money, dude, in five or six years, you could be a millionaire if you watch what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so talk through, because we, we always say, and it's been proven, that leasing is the most expensive way to finance a vehicle. So talk through the lease aspect of it, just from like the, the number standpoint right. of basically renting before you have to buy it out. When you finance a vehicle, the federal truth in lending laws, the regulations require them to hand you a sheet that shows you what your APR is, the interest rate they're ripping you off with, okay? When you lease a vehicle, you don't own it. So you're not technically borrowing money under the law, so they do not have to disclose the interest that they are charging you. But there is an interest calculation because you can take the actual cost of the car versus the stream of payments called your lease payments versus the pr the price at the closed end lease at the back end. These are three or four financial variables. I can put them in my financial calculator and back into what your interest rate is. It's called the capitalization rate because it's not technically interest. But as we've done that in this industry now, we found that the typical car lease in America is being capitalized at 14.2%. So you're borrowing money at subprime rates when you lease a car. But people people that lease cars, and I'm not picking on Brett because he's come to the conclusion that this doesn't work. But, uh, you know, to answer mm -hmm. your question yeah, further, yeah. this is not no, aimed at Brett. This is just talking about the subject, right? Brett, thank you for calling. We appreciate you. When you lease a car, you're not asking what the interest rate is. You're the people that ask how much down and how much a month. What's the least amount per month and the least amount down and I can drive this car? Rich people ask how much. Poor people and broke people ask how much down and how much a month. And that's what drives you into the lease. The lease is the most expensive thing on the car lot. That's why the car companies push them so hard, because they make more money on those than they do on the stinking car. That's it. It's math. This is The Ramsey Show. Five, Rachel Cruz, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author multiple times and co-host of the Smart Money Happy Hour on the Ramsey Network's podcast with George Camel. She's my co-host today and my daughter. Open phones at 888 825 -5225. Heather starts this hour in Tampa, Florida. Hi, Heather. How are you? Well, I'm better than I deserve. Good for <laughs> you. I love it. How can we help? Yes. Um, so I'm just trying to come up with a good investment plan. Um, both my husband and I, we've been married now 20 years this month. And um, I'm always just trying to look for better opportunities to try to keep, um, you know, uh, investment up. And while we still kind of work, you know, job to job, we kind of work paycheck to paycheck. And so um, I have uh, Apple stock that I invested in many years ago. And I have a uh, good wealth since we've been in Apple stock. We have tripled since we started. And um, we also have two Roth R IRAs, each just only 6000 for him, 8000 for me. And um, we got about $20,000 in savings. And so I was trying to figure out, I also do have just um, a house that we just bought. Um, and so we're paying on that and two cars is what we have, uh, no other debts, just those things. 
And so I was trying to figure out in my mind what I could do with my savings instead of making it so unproductive, just sitting in the account. You know, I have only $20,000 in savings, but would it be best to pay off a car? Would it be best um, to uh, cash out the Apple stock? Because, you know, of concerns, they always say we're on election time specifically with the crash, they always talk about that happening. So I'm just trying to get a better idea because I spoke with my financial advisor and he suggested maybe money market funds. And I'm not very wise as far as financially. Okay. Um, Money market funds for the 20,000? Yeah, he wasn't saying the full 20000 He was like, you could start out putting 10000 in money market funds, which, like I said, I'm not very familiar with it. Yeah. Well, money mm-hmm. market fund is a fancy savings account. It doesn't pay much. Mm-hmm. It pays more than a bad savings account at a bank. It's basically a high-yield savings account is what it is. So, um, mm-hmm. But still not paying big money. Now, here's the thing. What we teach, Heather, is that your most powerful wealth-building tool is your income. Okay. Your income right now is going to two car payments. If you had those car payments going into investments every month, you would be building wealth pretty rapidly. Mm -hmm. So our first goal is going to be to clear those car payments. What do you owe on your cars? So um, it's about uh, 16,000 and 18,000. Wow. Okay. And you've only got 20. Mm -hmm. What's your household income? Right. Um, my household income is about a little over a hundred thousand. Good. Okay. A year. All right. Mm-hmm. So if I woke up in your shoes, we teach a process to get you to wealth by getting you out of debt called the baby steps. Baby step one is a thousand dollars in the bank. Now, how much do you have in Apple stock? What is it valued at today? If you cash it in 21,000. Excellent. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. This is going to jar your system. Can you hold on to your chair for a second? Because I'm getting ready to knock you out of the chair. Okay. Here we go. You ready? you ready for the ride? Ready, set, go. Here we go. You ready? <laughs> oh, my. Just be, right. be kind. <laughs> now, I'm going to be kind, but it's going to scare the crap out of you. Are you ready? Oh, I'm cashing yeah. in the Apple stock and the 20000 and paying off my cars today. Mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> C- can you breathe? I mean, now that would be stupid if you don't do the next thing. (laughs) And the next thing is the first thing you got to do now is rebuild your emergency fund, which is what that 20,000 is. It's not supposed to make any money. It's supposed to sit there and keep life off of your head because life's going to come and land on your head and you will need a helmet. And that's what the 20,000 bucks is. It's the umbrella in the rain because some days it rains. So you need a rainy day fund. That's your 20000 It's not supposed to be making you a bunch of money. But right now we're paying off a car with it, so it doesn't matter. So the cars are gone. Any money that we don't have in a retirement Thank account. You. And you'll have 7000 left after that. Yeah. So gonna, you'll still start, start your, your emergency start fund. Start your emergency that, fund. Which is great. I do want to set that over in a money market or a high yield, and I want you to get about 20000 back in there. That's your three to six months of expenses. That's baby step three. Now you don't have any payments and you've got that. So now we've got to start investing, which is 15% of your income. That'd be $15,000 a year, 1100 bucks a month going in your company 401ks with a match in good mutual funds or sit down with your broker or get a new one and sit down and get your uh, your Roth IRAs going into good mutual funds. And Which I'll will want- be easy, Heather, because there's no car payment, to, to your point earlier. Yep. And then you freed up so much income. Do you know what I mean? Month to month, Heather. And so those Roth IRAs that have six in one and eight in the other, you're going to start seeing lots of traction in that. And it's... Yeah, you start a adding a thousand dollars, fifteen hundred dollars a month to your retirement plan. That's fifteen, eighteen thousand dollars a year, making a hundred grand. Then, um, and, and if you got a match at work, and these mutual funds go up this year, it would have made a little over ten percent this year, year to date. If you put it in January one to right now, you would have made ten percent on good mutual funds. And whoever's talking to you about a stock market crash, quit listening to those fools. Okay, stock market's not going to crash. It goes up and it goes down. It goes up and it goes down. In and election always, time, it is always crazy. There, there's yeah. always been stupid people in Washington of both brands. And there's still stupid people in Washington of both brands. 
some right now some of them are more stupid than normal but they're stupid people in washington okay so that's never that's not a new that's not new information no but to her point election time people do like things do kind of stall out people hold they watch I know, they see but you know the so stock you may, market doesn't crash on election no, it year. doesn't no it doesn't crash but you're going to see a little bit of that volatility and that's normal you can go back to basically every election year every 4 years and you see the same thing so it doesn't mean it's going to crash but it yeah it goes up it goes down and you're in the right you're in the right of it all yeah. so you just you ride right right you're just dumping 1100 yeah. bucks 1200 bucks a month 1400 bucks a month every single month and automatically out of your check into your 401k with a match or into Roth IRAs and, and Heather and I think Heather you're you're a prime example that so many people experience with their money honestly you're trying to do like five different things you got a single yep. stock here you're trying to do some retirement you got car payments you have a little bit of money here savings and it's like I, you feel so scattered versus clearing it all out and saying boom 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 and then you can now Tomorrow, or after the emergency fund's fully funded, after that 7000 you can fully focus on retirement. You have one thing to do at a time, and that's what gives you power and less of this like bizarre feeling that you probably feel with your money. Yeah, if you pay off the cars and have 7000 left over today, by, by the end of the year, you'll have your 20000 And in January, you'll start saving 15% from this point forward of your income going into retirement. You'll retire wealthy if you'll do those things. But you got to be on a budget to do it. you got to be in agreement with your husband. And no more borrowing on stupid cars. Stop it. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're like most people, your home is your most valuable asset. And when you want to make improvements, it can feel like everything costs too much or takes too long. But something as simple as custom window coverings from Blinds.com can completely change your space and add value to your home. We've recommended Blinds.com for over a decade, so you know you can trust them. From blinds, drapes, and shutters to motorized shades, they make it easy and affordable to upgrade your entire home, and their team is ready to help with everything from design consultation to measuring and installation. Plus, there are never any misleading quotes or hidden fees. Everything's backed by their 100% satisfaction guarantee, and shipping is always free. See why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. Visit Blinds.com to get up to 45% off. That's Blinds.com. Rules and restrictions may apply. Well, a lot of happening things around the Ramsey organization these days. The Ramsey Cash Christmas Cash Giveaway has started. You can win one of our $500 weekly prizes between now and Christmas every single week and or the grand prize of $5,000 given away the week of Christmas. All you got to do is enter. And you can enter up to once a day, every day, at RamseySolutions.com slash giveaway. You can also check out the uh, great gift ideas at the uh, Ramsey store at RamseySolutions.com. We've got a $12 sale is going, and that's all the uh, number one best-selling books that we have had out over the past years, like The Total Money Makeover, Own Your Past, Change Your Future, Baby Steps Millionaires, Know Yourself, Know Your Money, Rachel's number one, uh, last number one. On anyway, and uh, all, you know, the book we did that was a number one together, Smart Kids, Smart Money, Smart Kids, that was her first number one, uh, and man, th those books, all of those books, every book I've done is in there, $12, the Questions for Humans cards with Dr. John Deloney, the Christmas edition is back, those are $10, all kinds of fun gifts, and lots of new things 
there on the website. Dr. John Deloney's uh, b- brand new number one bestseller, Building a Non-Anxious Life, is on there. Uh, you can get George's new book, Pre-Sale, Breaking Free from Broke, and uh, launching next Tuesday, Rachel's brand new children's book, I'm Glad for What I Have. Great Christmas gift, mm-hmm. especially for the, for the, uh, the five-year-old, four, what is it, six years old and down, probably? Yeah, and honestly, the message is great for parents, for the yeah. adults, too. So. You adults get this and read I it over and over great. to yourself and get some contentment. <laughs> I, I need the message, so I wrote it. I was like, it's all good for us to remember. <laughs> it's all good. I'm glad for what I have. The brand new children's book by Rachel Cruz comes out Tuesday. So it's in the store for Christmas as well. It's all there and free money. You just can't beat it. Go to RamseySolutions.com slash giveaway to register for the free money. Our question of the day is brought to you by Neighborly, your hub for home services with 19 service brands nationwide. And today's question. Neighborly's, I'm sorry, Neighborly's network of local providers has trusted service professionals to handle multiple different services in and around your home. Visit neighborly.com slash Ramsey to find and schedule a service today. And today's question comes from Warren in Washington, D.C. I have a large amount of debt. Wouldn't it be better to file for bankruptcy to have a fresh start and then build wealth instead of taking years to pay off debt and then start to build wealth? When is bankruptcy a good option? Uh, we would say in the very, very, very rare case is bankruptcy an option because uh, most of the time it is a you problem and bankruptcy doesn't solve a you problem. It may wipe debts away, not your student loans, and then it's on your record for a while. Uh, but the problem is usually when it comes to money, it's us. It's the person handling it. And so while in one sense it could sound like an easy um, exchange, I'll take bankruptcy for the no debts it doesn't change the pattern of what caused you to get in there in the first place. And, and most of the time we find people can get out of debt. I mean, rare, I don't, I mean, it's only been a handful of times on this show that you've ever even uh, entertained the idea of giving someone advice for bankruptcy. Yeah. I, I, I don't tell people to file bankruptcy and I don't tell people to file divorce um, with the exception of uh, a situation where the wife is a punching bag because her husband's scum. In that case, file divorce, get out of there. He's scum. Uh, but other than that, I don't tell people to do the stuff like this. I don't make decisions like that for you on this show. I will tell you that you should file bankruptcy about as often as you should file for a divorce, which is almost never. If you have a big fight with your wife, you don't go file for divorce. It's a, we've been through a rough patch this, this summer. You don't go file for a divorce. You work it out. You sit down with a marriage counselor. You sit down with your pastor. You read a marriage book or six, um, and you work on it, and you learn how to do it, and you fix it. And the same thing's true with your money. Now, that's from a guy that did file bankruptcy, but we fought two and a half years to keep from filing bankruptcy. They were down to, we've been sued 78 times before we filed bankruptcy. They were coming to take the furniture out of our house, and Rachel was two months old. And I decided they're not taking the baby bed. I fought this for two and a half years. I've sold everything we owned. I've done everything we could do. I took it all the way to the bottom, and then we filed for bankruptcy in September of 1988. And uh, that's what started this whole Ramsey movement, by the way, was my stupidity. So uh, and, and I fought it all the way to the bottom. I I now know things that I didn't know then that I could have done further. There's some techniques I could have used, some dance steps, dance moves I could have used to uh, to delay it even further. And I might have made it through if I'm knowing what I know now. But uh, but I didn't know I was out of gas. And, and yours get, was all real estate. Snot beat out. Yeah, it was all real estate. It oriented. wasn't consumer. But either, it, I didn't but. have any consumer debt, hardly at all. Um, I borrowed on the cars to buy houses. So I didn't have car payments, but I had car payments. But um, so, but anyway, all, all that aside, you're, uh, uh, Warren, you're not bankrupt. Your Bankruptcy is not a technique for building wealth. It's like life insurance is not a technique for building an estate. You don't buy life insurance to leave your children something because that doesn't work. It leaves the insurance company stuff is what it does. So, no, you're, you're not bankrupt. You need to take the years to pay off the debt. As a matter of fact, you need to take months instead of years because you get six jobs. And um, the person that you become, Warren, while you fight your way through this, 
is much more important than any mathematical equation that you're looking at. Mm -hmm. The toughness and the perseverance that will be required of you to work your way through this is going to make you into the man that will be able to build and manage wealth in the next chapter of your life. But this is not a, I'm just going to dust this off. Get out of free jail away. card. Kind it's not, of thing. It's not yeah. a, you know, that's childish. And no, you don't use bankruptcy that way. And by the way, the way the bankruptcy laws are written right now, if you've got a big income and this debt's just an inconvenience to you and you go in, you think you're going to file bankruptcy and wipe out the stuff, the, de the bankruptcy laws are written now where you, they're going to take you out of that Chapter 7 and put you in a Chapter 13 and make you pay payments. A Chapter 13 is a payment bankruptcy lasts five years, 60 months. There are formulas that the law has in place, the regulations have in place that force you to do that. There's mathematical tests, and it forces you into paying payments. And so if you have the ability to pay payments and just don't want to, um, the law doesn't allow you to do that anymore. It's going to smack you upside the head and make you pay payments anyway in bankruptcy. So then you got double dumb. You got payments and you got bankruptcy. So you got absolutely no traction. You got none of your little idea worked. So no, you're not bankrupt. Yes, you need to roll up your sleeves and fight through this. Yes, you need to sell so much stuff the kids think they're next. Yes, you need to work all the time. Yes, you need to get the scissors out and place them across the credit cards and press hard repeatedly. It's called plastic surgery. You need to get out of the debt business. You've got to learn what caused you to get here and then fight your way through. It's what happened to us afterwards. Afterwards, we had to start over and we had to learn what happened so that I'm never back there again. And I'm just going to start fresh. It's not going to work, dude. The law's not going to let you, and uh, and it, you, you're going to miss out on who Warren would have become. Well, yeah, because you don't change, and that that's why we even are cautious when people get a lump sum of money, whether from like an insurance settlement or um, you know um, from uh, what is it when when someone passes an in, estate? No, an yeah. in, uh, insurance uh, uh, life insurance insurance. Inheritance. That's what I was thinking of. In inheritance. inheritance. Yeah. But when okay. people call and they have a sum of money and they're like, I can go and pay off my debt. We're like, OK, that's great, because, yes, we want you debt free and yeah. you can use it. But also you have to just be careful in that when there's a sweep of something that happens that comes through. Again, you're not changing who you are and you're the one that got yourself in this position. And so the beauty of the sacrifice through all of that is you change with it. So on the other end, you feel the pain that you've walked through versus having one big sweep that just kind of takes care of everything. So that's always even the word of caution with, yeah, if you're getting an insurance settlement or an inheritance or something like that, just to be cautious that it's still you handling that money. And if you haven't changed, your money situation might not change either. Yeah, I'll go a step further. If you can pay your bills and you just refuse to, that's stealing. That's stealing, it's unethical. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey guys, being free to make your own medical decisions is a big deal these days. Christian Healthcare Ministries gives members the freedom to choose the doctors and providers they want without the frustration of worrying about networks and with no waiting period to join. It's a membership-based nonprofit ministry where hundreds of thousands of Christians share funds to pay for and pray for each other's medical bills. For over 40 years, CHM has helped families living across all 50 states. So see if CHM could be right for your family. Check out more today at chministries.org slash budget.
Rachel Cruz, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author, is my co-host today in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage. Nicholas is with us. Hi, Nicholas. How are you? Great. How are you, Dave? Better than I deserve. Welcome. Where do you live? York, Pennsylvania, which is a small town outside of the capital of Harrisburg. Absolutely. Welcome to Nashville. It's a bit of a haul down here. Just a little bit. (laughs) Good to have you. So how much debt have you paid? $56,610.32. Way to go. How long did that take? 25 months. All right. And your range of income during that two years? Started at $56,000 and end this year at about eighty. dollars Wow. Good for you. What do you do for a living? I'm in retail management, and I have a small business that I run as well. Cool. What's your business? We, uh, we sell seat inserts for race car drivers. It helps reduce the risk of spinal injury when there's a crash. Yeah. Wow. wow. That's yes. awesome. Good yes. for you. What kind of debt was the 57000 It's 44000 student loans and then 12000 business loan. Okay. All nice. Right. Good for you. How old are you? 24. And no payments Good for in you. the world. <laughs> That's amazing. Yes. Good for you. Absolutely amazing. So tell us the story. How did all this happen and how'd you get connected to Ramsey and decide to be a weird 24 year old <laughs> with no debt? So I was in college and I was a huge personal finance nerd. So I was watching a lot of content and I know Dave, you have a very thick skin, I'm sure after 30 years, but it's like, these people are bashing this Dave Ramsey guy. Maybe I, maybe I, I should check it out. So I think it's important to listen to other perspectives, and I really appreciated how you guys uh, spread the message of helping others who are struggling and, and devise a plan for, for those who are in need and, and especially in debt. So flash forward uh, shortly after graduation, not making the, uh, the smartest decisions. I had $50 in my bank account, and I was at the casino. And uh, last $400 I had, and that was my oh crap moment, you know, time to get serious and time to really buckle down and, and follow the plan. So that's what, uh, that's where it all started. So it turns out the casino is not a wealth building method. It is not. <laughs> yeah. You know, the fun thing about some of those haters in our space um, is I, I've met many of them over the years and they don't really hate me. I'm just really good clickbait. Yes. <laughs> you know, so if you put Dave Ramsey in the title of your thing, it just shows up everywhere. It's just really good for your thing. So the reason they hate on me is it helps them. You know, that's why the, that's why a lot of them do it. They don't even really disagree. They just It's just easier to disagree and, than it is because they don't get any lift if they agree. So it doesn't help their social media presence. So anyway, all right, cool. So 57000 is paid off. You got connected to us because we were the weird ones in the space. Now you're the weird one in the space because you're de- debt-free. Most 24-year-olds are walking around going, I don't know what I'm going to do. And you actually had a clue man congratulations thank you yeah i mean and you look at your income and what you paid off i'm like you you did a lot you did a lot of just sacrifice so what would you say to 24 year olds out there that are like oh we just want to enjoy life and just move at the speed of whatever we want like because you were i mean you were on a plan yeah yes so i think it comes down to three things um sacrifice work ethic and vision. So I went to a state school, just happened to be one of the more expensive ones in Pennsylvania. And um, so from there, I got a good degree, got a good job, but you know, that's not always enough. And I wish I would have found you guys earlier in my college college years. But um, so that's kind of where the work ethic comes in and really just long hours, long days, sometimes 12, 14 straight days. I was up so early sometimes uh, in my hometown, the, the lights weren't even working. It was the blinking yellow. Yeah. You yeah. know, not even, not even uh, the red light, uh, yeah. yellow, green. So, yeah. but I think work ethic and then vision, you know, Dave, we had this conversation in my head like 56 times already. So uh, that was the vision that, that helped me get here today. So and, good. Yeah. How does it feel? Oh, it's incredible. It's the incredible. good news about going on the road less traveled is there's no traffic, and that includes six o'clock in the morning, five o'clock in the morning, <laughs> yeah, with the blinking yellow light. Yeah, that, that's there's, there's nobody there because nobody's willing to pay that price. That's why there's nobody out there. And so, you know, if I get out where there's a whole bunch of people, I'm worried because right. that means I'm in the wrong place because they're all in the wrong place. I know they are. So good for you, man. Congratulations. Thank you. What do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is? I think it's. Um 
I think it's sacrifice, uh, work ethic, and vision. Those three mm-hmm. things, that combination yeah. and, yeah. Um, you know, making sacrifices, you know, not buying the first car and, and things like that that go a long way, you know. Um, you know, everyone's on their own journey, but, you know, it, it's freeing to know that there's no more payments. Or, oh, yeah. yeah. You know. What do people in your life say as you were in this journey? Were you pretty vocal about it or did you kind of just buckle down yourself? Did you, did you get your own haters? Uh, you know, you, you, you need your own haters, man. <laughs> um, people were very supportive. I have a very good crew here today, and I'm, I'm very appreciative and grateful that we were able to make the trip down. So, uh, you know, I think there's always haters. I'm sure you guys know that. And um, but a lot of lot of support. Good. Yeah. Good. So is this so family good. and friends or just friends? or? Yes. So my parents, my grandmother, my cousin and his wife and two friends. All right. Awesome. Very so good. Great. Yes. Well, that's, that's perfect. That's good. That's a good support group because it is tough to do this by yourself. You can do it, but it's tough. Right. And because uh, you got to stand up because people think you're weird right. because you are weird. Normal's broke. You know, normal's lazy. Normal's out of control. Normal's chaotic. Uh, so all what, that. What are you going to do now? You're 24, no payments. You'll get your emergency fund in place, right. I'm assuming. <laughs> so and then beyond that, what's your, what do you want to do? Baby step 3B right now, saving for the down payment and then looking to do some travel. So obviously we're going to enjoy our Nashville weekend here Yay. and uh, some international destinations in, in the new year, which I'm looking forward to. Good Where are you going, you. do you know? Uh, Europe for a week with yeah, my buddy Tom. That's and, fun. Uh, yeah, we're going to Barcelona and London. Oh, awesome. both good stops. Yes. You spent some time That's in so Barcelona, great. didn't you? No. no, it was outside of Madrid. Outside of Madrid. That's in right. college. Yeah, she did Back a she did a little uh, study abroad thing. Back in the which day. Which means I'm on vacation <laughs> and we're paying tuition. That's what that means. But yeah. Sort yeah. of. It was great. It was great. Yeah. Way That's, to go, man. I Congratulations. Know. Congratulations. Thank That's you. huge. Well done. Hey, it's we've huge. got uh, the Live and Give box for you. It's got the Baby Steps Millionaires book because that's definitely where you're going, my man. 24 years old and already rocking it. Well done. Amazing. And the Total Money Makeover book to give away to one of those friends who wasn't sure you were crazy. You'll prove it now. <laughs> and of course, the uh, Financial Peace University membership. If you haven't been through it, go through it. If you have or don't want to, give it to somebody. It's Live and Give. That's what the box is for people buy it all the time to do that they take some of it and use it they um, give away part of it and so we're gonna give it to you to say thanks for being here so proud of you hero thank you well done man Great well job. done Appreciate it's gotta it. feel studly yes thank you very much <laughs> good stuff man very cool a lot of hard work absolutely yeah the blinking yellow light man that's a thing <laughs> that's when you know you've been getting it <laughs> that, that's good i like that a lot i've been there a lot most of my life so very very cool good for you all right, it's Nicholas York, Pennsylvania. $57,000 paid off in 25 months, making 56 to 80. Count it down. Let's hear a debt free scream. Three, two, one. I'm debt free. Yeah. <laughs> Woohoo! I love it. So great. Rachel, I've been saying for years that uh, while people uh, in my boomer age group have been trashing the Gen Z and trashing the millennials, yes. uh, that there are ones worthy of being trashed, but we also <laughs> run into the good ones. Oh, and yeah. And we run into them on this debt free stage quite often these days from 24 to 34 years old. And some of them in 34 paying off their home mm-hmm. and that kind of stuff. And uh, there, for those of you out there, you just got to know. We've got two really good generations. Now, the media paints them with a wide brush, and as somebody lives in their mother's basement or some kind of crap, and that's just not true. I mean, you got a 24-year-old with a blinking yellow light because he's up so stinking early in the morning, busting it, getting it, paying off $57,000 worth of student loans. He's not sitting around whining, sucking his thumb, waiting on Joe Biden to fix his life. He did it. That's a Gen Z right there, and there's a bunch of them. There's a whole bunch like oh, yeah. Nicholas out there. It's not all deadbeats. They're not all off. You know, this. these are two really good generations. I got a bunch of them working here. They're good. Innovative, strong. smart, hardworking. Mission driven. There we go. Him. Nicholas. That's it, man. Way to go, man. You're an absolute hero. This is The Ramsey Show.
Rachel Cruz, Ramsey personality, my co-host today. This is The Ramsey Show, where we talk about your life and your money. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Jay's in Kansas City. Hi, Jay. How are you? I am blessed. How are you, Dave? Better than I deserve. What's up? Well, before I start, I want to thank you for your foundations curriculum for high schoolers and homeschoolers, because without that, I wouldn't be that free today. Wow. Oh, wow. Very cool. So, were, you, were you a student in it or a teacher? or how did... I, I, I took it as a homeschooled student uh, yeah. years and years and years ago. Wow. Good that's for fun. you, Jay. So my question today is I'm baby step four, five, and six. I have about 120000 saved for retirement. That's across my IRA, my Roth IRA, my wife's Roth IRA, and the 401k. How old are you? And I'm uh, 30 years old. Good for you. Well done. Thank you. Uh, I feel, from what I've been running the numbers with, that I'm on the teetering edge of coasting financial independence. And I'm trying to best understand my plan with the end in mind. So how I'm going to turn that nest egg when I retire into income. I found on your website... Uh, a little article that talks about a uh, four to five percent withdrawal rate, and I was trying to run the numbers around that, and I thought I was close. And then about a, what was it a month ago, George Camel released a video that said that the withdrawal rate for a thirty-year time horizon should be closer to three percent. So if, if I can establish financial independence comfortably, then I was wondering if I could ease up on baby step four to pay off the house faster. Okay, I'm a little confused because I don't know what the hell George is doing doing a three percent withdrawal rate, because that's absolutely wrong. I don't. I'm gonna have to find out where that video is and get it taken down, because um, that's just wrong. You don't need to have a three percent withdrawal rate. That's ridiculous. Um, or I hope you misunderstood. I hope we didn't put out trash like that. Was but it maybe, four to five percent? Like maybe, the, no, it shouldn't be four to five percent. It ought to be more than that. I mean, if you're well, making uh, twelve in good mutual funds and the S and P is average 11.8. And if inflation for the last 80 years is average 4%, if you make 12 and you need to leave 4% in there for inflation raises, that leaves you eight. So I'm perfectly comfortable drawing eight, but if you want to be a little bit conservative seven, but sure not five or three. Well, I was trying to back check it because, you know, the, Three to five, I thought that was a big range. And a lot of the studies I found showed... Well, there's a lot of studies that are stupid in this space. So It's just wrong. Listen, man, the math I just gave you is the math. If you're making 12% and inflation is four, and you leave four in there, so your nest egg grows by four, it's simple. Eight is what's left over. So if you got a million dollars and you leave 4% in there, that's 40,000 bucks. Okay, so you now have a million forty. So the next year you get your you get a rate of return of twelve percent, eleven and a half percent on the million forty, mm-hmm. and the next year it'll be you know a million ninety, one point one, right? And because you're, so your nest egg is growing by the rate of inflation, giving you a cost of living raise every year. So as long as you're doing that, you're fine. Uh, and, and so if you would want you, to be a you, little bit conservative, maybe 5%. Would you but say there's t- all these goobers out there have always put this 4% crap in the market, and I'm just irate right now that we have joined the stupidity. Why is it that stupid, though? Like, I it's just wanna- too low. It's too low because it's not realistic. You do not need to live on 4% of your money for your nest egg to survive. Yeah, even if you did a rate of and return of set, 10% and, or something. Yeah, and what it sets up is... This guy now, he, he doesn't he doesn't think he's got enough money. And he's already got hundred and twenty thousand dollars and he's thirty years old and he's on a plan. He's on a plan to be very wealthy and he's worried he's gonna have enough money or not. Yeah. You know, because of, because we people stupid people put out <laughs> low withdrawal rates like you but listen, if you, you rather if you if you think you can only pull off four percent off of investments making twelve, where the flip is the other eight percent going? Well, 4% of it went to inflation. That's where it went. The other 4% is just sitting there. So you are growing your investments instead of living off of them. I'm not destroying the nest egg. I'm not even touching the nest egg. I'm growing the nest egg. 
by leaving four percent in there. Yeah, taking eight off of a twelve. Okay, so growth so rate. go go at ten percent rate of return. Go a little bit more conservative with your rate of return. Go ten percent. What would you do with ten percent? Well, then four off of that, so six. Six, yeah. But I, why we why are you going to underinvest? Yeah, I mean this year. The S and P to date was ten percent. Is ten percent, and we're not even at the end of the year yet. Yeah, you know, and 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 everybody's talking about how bad the economy is. So you know, I, most years mine have done much better than twelve, and so I'm. But wouldn't I, you? But if you can do your standard of living though, lower than what you need. Like if you don't need. If you don't need it, that's fine. Yeah. Like I'm 62, I'm pulling, or 63, I'm pulling nothing off of mine. Right. Because I don't need it. I still work. I still have an income. Right, right, right. I, I don't need any of it. So but it's all just sitting but there But you growing. could do but 4%. The, the, the problem is, is when you go down these stupid nerd rabbit holes in these Reddit threads with these morons who live in their mother's basement with a calculator, and then you... Then you put that out in the dadgum community, and then people go, I don't have enough money. It's hopeless. I'll never be able to save enough to retire. A million dollars should create for you an $80,000 income, boys and girls. So you should, perpetually, like if forever, you should be able to pull 80000 forever and never destroy it. Now that that and so when you tell people that a million dollars creates a forty thousand dollar income, you go, oh, I've got to have two million dollars, and I can't make that. Then the, this system yeah, doesn't yeah. work. So what you're doing with this bogus math is you're stealing people's hope. That's why I'm pissed about it because it's hope stealing with n- super nerds that have never really done anything to start with. They don't have any investments. They just have theories. I've actually freaking got investments. My money is actually invested exactly the way I teach people to invest it. And I'm easily making 12% on my money. Easily. You know, average throughout yeah, a decade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's just asinine that we do this stuff. So no, honey, you need to save 15% of your income in baby step four to you get your house paid off. When your house gets paid off, you will increase your investing ratios above that. You are not going to retire poor. Stay away from 4% withdrawal rate morons who are telling you this is the thing. So, God, it's just aggravating. So, I, I, yeah, I can see the hope because ceiling. Because it I, makes people think they need $2 million yes. when they only need a $1 million. Yeah. Or it makes them think they need $8 million when they only need $4 million. Yeah. And here's the way the end of the story is this no one ever actually ends up ever with what you thought you were going to end up with. Right. Ever. So you, you're sitting there at 30 or 29 years old and you're doing these projections, which it's okay to do the projection. Sure, sure. And you project out there and you go, okay, I'm going to have $1.7 million at this current rate. Yeah. But, you know, what you haven't factored in is between now and 35 years from now when you're 65, you're going to run into flying monkeys, <laughs> wicked witches. Have you seen The Wizard of Oz? You're going to be on the yellow brick road and, sometimes. And, and, and Glenda, you're gonna, sometimes and the wonderful you're going to have witch. money drop in your hands Who's great? out of nowhere. You're going to make more money than you ever need. You're going to have ruby red slippers sometimes, and sometimes you're going to have flying monkeys stealing them. And at the end of the story, you're not, your little projection is not accurate. You're going to make a buzz. Usually, most people end up with about 2x of what they thought they were going to end up with if they stay on their plan. Right, right. Because they're playing, because you never, you know, like here, here, here's another thing. Here's what happens between 30 and 65. Your income goes up almost every freaking year. Your income goes up. I mean, you think about what people made 40 years ago as an average income. When I started this show 30 years ago, the average household income in America was 40. You know what it is now? 73. That's average. And so if you're just average, your income's going to double. And if you're actually doing these nerd calculations, you're already above average. (laughs) So, oh, my God, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. And I tell you, the the financial (laughs) industry and their moronic paralysis of the analysis pisses me off to no end. This is The Ramsey Show.
It's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Thank you for joining us, America. Rachel Cruz, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today, number one best-selling author, and my daughter. Open phones here at 888-825-5225. Filippo is with us to start this hour in Los Angeles. Hi, Filippo. How are you? Hi. Great. How are you guys? Better than we deserve. What's up? Uh, so uh, I'm working my way. Uh, we, actually, my wife and I are working our way through the baby steps. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got your book, The Total Money Makeover. I'm reading through that. Um, we have the, the, a nice emergency fund for now. It's about $3,000 in it. And... Um, I'm trying to plan out the debt repayment because we have uh, two car loans that amount at about 50000 total. And I have a uh, HELOC uh, on our house, and it has about uh, 125000 in it. Um, so a, I, all right, you have you know, a, a debt on the HELOC or an amount that is not used on the HELOC? No, no, the debt on the HELOC. You uh, owe 120000 on your HELOC? Correct. Ugh, okay. Um, 50,000 on your cars. Well, what do you make? Uh, total about between 140 and 160 a year. Okay. All right. And, and, and you uh, have $3,000 right now. In the emergency fund, yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. And your question's what? Uh, um, uh, so I want to sell both cars because I can probably get um, what we owe uh, back. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm wondering if I should use the HELOC to pay for a much lower payment car um, and so to consolidate all that in one or to get another another way smaller loan to get a, a car. Because we can get another car from my sister-in-law uh, that my wife can use. Mm-hmm. And then we will need a family car because we have an 11-month-old. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you're going to sell the two the cars you owe fifty thousand on. They'll bring fifty, and then you've got you're Correct. going to get a car from your sister in law, and then you got to get another car on payments, but it'll be less than fifty. Oh yeah, I, I was thinking about between fifteen and twenty. Okay, all right, somewhere in that range. So the it, neither one of your car current cars are uh, fifteen or twenty. No, they're uh, one is twenty three, the other one is twenty four. Okay. Well, moving from 23 to 15 is not that big a deal when you make 160. So I'd probably just keep one of those, sell the other one, Mm -hmm. and take your sister-in-law's car and call it a day. And let's get then let's get it paid off as fast as possible. Right, right, right. right. Yeah, that's that's the plan. Yeah, which one of those you want to keep? Uh, The tracks because it's it's bigger and you know for the baby and the, the, the if we have to move stuff. So it's got a it's a crew cab. It's got a second cab in it, or second row seats. Yeah, it's a, it's a super crew. It's yeah, a, okay. F-150. All right. So you yeah you can. It's basically a four door car. Okay, I got you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's good for travel too. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Keep keep one of them, and then let's get the other one paid off as soon as possible. If that's your only debt, except your home. Yeah, I mean the car, and then the HELOC that I want to. You know, it's 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 burdening on me. It's like a thousand dollars a month payments. Yeah, we mm-hmm. tell folks on the uh, on HELOCs they go in baby step six if they're more than mm-hmm. half your annual income, which they are in your case. Yeah, so I'm going to roll it yeah. over to six. What's your uh, more mortgage balance on your first mortgage? Uh, five twenty five. What's your interest rate on that? Uh, three point two. Hmm. What's the interest rate on the HELOC? Well, we started at six, and now it's about nine. Yeah. In the last week. Uh, this is why we tell people not to do these all the time. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm yeah. with you. I, I Normally, I would lean into it in baby step two because it's, uh, I mean, in six because it's more than half your annual income. But uh, uh-huh. once you get rid of the car debt, I probably would reach over and start smacking it because it's such a high interest rate. Exactly. I, I think I can, once I get rid of the car payments, I can start throwing like you know, somewhere between three and 4000 a month at it. Yeah, yeah, I think that's probably wise. I'm, I'm with you on that. Let's do that. But, yeah, I would keep the truck and pay it off and sell the other one and take the okay. sister-in-law car for the second car, and uh, that puts you in a really good place. You're making good moves there. Mm-hmm. 
for sure. When I think, you know, it's so interesting with the HELOC discussion, because even talking to people that we know in our lives are like, oh, it's a, it's such an easy route to feel like you get what you want when you want it kind of thing, especially with your house. If you're going to go do renovations, all of it, it's, it is the one piece of debt that I'm starting to hear people justifying. Oh, they've always justified everything. But the, the, it, it's, the, the thing is, it's a sleeper. Mm-hmm. Because it sounds like, oh well, this is no big deal. When it's and, putting and into it's my actually, house, it's actually a piece of crap as far as debt goes. It's a really horrible product, and here's the reason: you put your home at risk to go on vacation. I mean, how stupid is that? Well, I know a lot you of people do. Put your home at risk to buy a couch, or to do renovations, or to do that, a renovation. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, instead of cash flowing the renovations, and it was just it was just immaturity. I want it, and I want it now, and I'm four freaking years old. That's all it is. And then, but I, but I, um, I've got it on a HELOC, and that makes it sound sophisticated. <laughs> You're not sophisticated. It's stupid. And so, are they always variable rates? And that's the other problem. They they have calls in them. They'll re you requalify you. You lose your job, and that thing comes up with a call. They'll foreclose on your butt. Yeah. So, they'll, or they'll have a three year balloon on them, or, or and they've got a stinking variable rate. And variable rates were great for the decade that we sat around at three percent. You didn't worry about a variable rate, but now you guys are facing reality out there. Variable rate means variable. And it usually means up when it comes to a bank, right? So here we go. Now you get screwed. Now you got a 9% second mortgage on your house. Oh, yeah. my bless his heart. I mean, I'm glad he's, I'm glad he's upset about it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But yeah. yeah it's, it, the problem, though, is what you're saying is true. It's just, it, it, it's, well, and I think it's seasonal it, Everybody life. acts like it's okay. Yes. And it's a horrible product. And it's so interesting when you go through life and you look from 18 to 65 and you start to watch these financial products really play a bigger role in your seasonal life. So if you are, if you've been married, you have kids, you're kind of in that seasonal life of like the 30s, 40s. That's when the HELOC, right? It's not as much the student loan anymore. You're trying to pay right, it off. Right. The student loan was the discussion in your 20s. Then it moves to. Uh, well, you move into. You, and then and car, all along, you've been overspending on credit cards. So now we're going to yeah. move those over onto the HELOC. Yeah, I mean, and like, we're going to keep spending like we're in college. You watch it. And then you get to the, you know, your your age group and it's oh, reverse, no, people. reverse mortgages and all this stuff. So I'm like, you just have to be aware. Your season of life, they, they know how to, how to, how to pick at the places that you're discontent in yeah. thinking I can get ahead in this. And we the probably do need to write a blog about stupid things at each decade of your life. Yeah. The 20s, the twenties, stupid things, the thirties, stupid things, the forties, stupid things, the fifties, stupid things, the sixties and seventies, stupid things. Yeah. They're stupid things. We can tell how old you are by the stupid things you're doing. <laughs> this is the Ramsey show. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host. Rachel Cruz is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. If you like what you hear, help us out. We need your help. Subscribe to the show. Click the subscribe button. Click the follow button. Share the show. Clip a link out. And click a Cut a link out and send it to your friends or click the share button. Anything like that that you can do helps us. It moves everything around in the algorithms and lets people out there in the land of YouTube and podcast know that we're there. If we're listening, if you're listening on your local radio station, thank you for that. Tell people that we're there on talk radio, 680 talk radio stations right now. Thank you very much. And even uh, TBN, we're on TBN every day. So if you get that app or you're watching that on your cable provider, either one, thank you. Thank you for hanging out wherever you are and help us spread the word and leave a five-star review. Say something nice. Saying something nice on the internet, that would be cool. 
That'd be, that some, that'd be nice. a new thing to say something nice, nice on the internet. Ah, uh, Jacob is in Fort Worth, Texas. Hi, Jacob. How are you? Doing well, sir. How are you doing? Better than I deserve. What's up? Hey, I was just calling because uh, obviously I, uh, I enjoy listening to you and uh, respect your opinion. Thank but you. My fiance and I, we're looking to move from Fort Worth back to our home state of Minnesota. Cool. And so I was looking to get your opinion about kind of what to look for when buying our first home and um, looking at like a, a fixer upper versus a house that's already in like pristine shape. Uh, maybe in a growing market, our idea is that we're not going to be here forever or in that home. So we're looking to grow equity um, in the smartest way possible. Fiance. Did you say fiance? Yes, sir. Yeah, my fiance and I. Yeah. When are you getting married? Um, well, we keep pushing it off. We've been engaged for about two years, but we uh, originally from Minnesota. We moved down to Kansas City for two years, and then we moved to Fort Worth kind of on a whim. And then decided, so we're hoping to get married at the end of next year, but our goal is to buy a home first. Don't. Do not buy a home with someone you're not married to. You're going to get yourself into legal, relational, spiritual, and financial trouble. Don't do it. Don't do it. I talked to a gal, okay. a gal yesterday that called me. She had been living with a guy for eight years. They had two cars in their names, four credit cards in their names, and a house in their names, and he left. You know what she is? Screwed. She can't get she can't sell any of it because he won't sign the titles to any of it. He won't pay the payments on any of it. So she's being forced into bankruptcy because of this right here. Don't do this. Go to see the preacher and get your butt married before you buy a house. Okay? Because you're going to get a mess, dude. You're going to get in a serious mess. Don't do that. I've been doing this 30 years. All I've heard is pain around this subject. No one ever gets blessed by what you're trying to do here. Don't do it. Please don't do it. Now, once you get up there and you're married, because you're going to go get married this weekend. Now and you know it's me. her. Y'all have been together two years. So I'm like, just get the yeah. license. You guys are married. You're acting like you're married. You're basically married. Yeah, paint her, get off the ladder. Yeah. You got this, Jacob. So, yeah. anyway. I, mean, I believe I in you. To, uh, I debated about that. Um, you know, part of it was going to get our license, like you, like you just said. And then all of, the other part of me was thinking about, like, it was her special day. So I kind of wanted everything to happen at once. Yeah. But our goal is to, this is our biggest investment. And we're not looking to, you know, a lot of people take out loans and they have these uh, fancy weddings that cost so much money. But that's not really what we're looking for, um, for the long game. But it is still her special day. Yeah, it is her special um, day, so don't screw it up with buying a house before the special day, and then y'all have no special days. Definitely, definitely. Okay. So you recommend, um, you know, like just going to get a simple license? or, or, or I don't care. I mean, y'all figure it out. Figure out what, you, what, well, the what, point her, is that, what her special day looks like. But I would not put your name on a deed with someone that you are not married to. You're creating what your attorney would tell you is called a general partnership with no general partnership documents. And so, and I've seen all kinds of horrible things happen to people in these situations. Some of them are just mean. Some of them are sad, but it just, it's a mess. I have one guy, his fiance got killed now and there was no will. She got killed in a car wreck and now he owns a house with her mother. Talk about awkward. That story. Yeah. Talk about awkward. I That's a I mess. Think. So don't do that now. Okay. Now, so y'all figure out how, whether, you, you know, how you're going to get married, but before you're married, before you buy a house together, get married. Now let's pretend you're married and then we'll answer your question. If you're brand new married, I would not buy a fixer upper. Fixer uppers are hard work. It's tough. It's distracting. I would want you to focus on each other and be in love. Instead of hanging curtains and tiling pe and peeling old old wallpaper, because off. let me say this: it, it's sat, it's romanticized on HGTV. It, uh, it, it feels like, oh my gosh, we're going to fix this house up and get what we want, all of it, and it does end up being usually more expensive. The time frame is longer. You're dealing with contractors. You're trying to. I mean, you, it's a second job, is basically what that is. And, and so, for you your live, first year of marriage, you, you live in that. dust, perpetual yeah. dust. It's it, dust it's not, and it's all a, the it's time. Some people do it well, but it sounds a whole lot better than the actual reality of it. There, there, there's nothing good about it.
<laughs> I've renovated one house while I lived in it. It's a disaster. I'm sitting yeah. in a lawn chair right. on plywood floors because everything's ripped up watching the Super Bowl one time. I told Sharon, I said, you might be a redneck if you're sitting in your own house inside in, in a, a lawn chair on a plywood floor watching the Super Bowl. <laughs> That's what renovating a house is. It ain't Chip and Joanna. I'm just telling you. Nobody's hair is done. The makeup's <laughs> not right. It's all bad. Okay. There's no reality in reality TV. HGTV has ruined your perception of this thing. So no, I would not do a fixer upper. Not my first house. If you're going to do a fixer upper, don't live in it while you're doing it. Live somewhere else, fix it up over there, then move in it. If you want to do a, if you want to get a, some equity from some work being done, it can be a little little bit of light work. Like we've got to do, we got to tear all the landscaping out. And we got to run a coat of paint through the thing. That's okay. But this idea, we're going to knock down walls and and, and you know the decorator is going to prance through and tell you, uh, no. No. And the kitchens, no, you're killing me. No, don't please. Now your don't expectation do though may have to lower that depending on what you guys can afford. Yeah. The, you know, that it won't be this top of the line either though, right? So like there's a le- there's a you're right. a medium I, there of like yeah. But, but that's a good be. point. I, I forget that these reality shows that aren't reality <laughs> that have nothing to do with where they're scripted as they can be. Um, and the hilarious thing is people in the industry call them unscripted TV, but they're about, they're more scripted than a dadgum sitcom. And then, and they've romanticized it. Make, make, yeah. cause, you know, between commercial breaks, the whole thing gets done and, and it, no, it's eight months later and you're still sucking drywall dust while you're trying to sleep. You know, it's just, it's nasty. I grew up in the construction business. I've done probably 1500 rehabs in my life i used to do it for a living you don't want to do that it's yeah. not yeah it's not what tv portrays it to be you're right about that i had thought I had not thought about that part of the problem sounds dreamy and romantic yeah it's not it's not fun yeah um i i know it's shocking to you people but those people on the bachelor could have got a date without the tv show it's shocking i know but um yeah, it's it's if they were really looking to not be a bachelor, it probably could have worked it out. But um, so without any anyway. So, yeah, that, that's funny. Ra- Rachel's favorite show. Is that your favorite show still? Uh, it's moved on to The Real Housewives. The so Real Housewives? We can, talk, we can talk reality TV another day, Dave. You uh, will not like my reality TV. No, People I don't like any reality TV. And The Kardashians' new season's out. You know? Oh, I love it. Gosh. I think it's all fantastic. You are so culturally relevant. I think I... That I am. That I am. <laughs> you kept mentioning Tiger King even like six months ago. I was like, oh, Dave, no one watches that anymore. No, I mean, that, that was a that COVID was, thing. That was a thing we during get the you Fauci in pandemic. The end. But that's, hey, that's Love is Blind during the talks Fauci a pandemic. lot. We watched Tiger King. Yeah, but Love is Blind talks a lot about money. There's a lot of and conversations around it. None of it makes sense. Yeah. All right, no. there we go. <laughs> you never know. Uh, good luck, Jacob. I hope it works out for you, my brother. Uh, sorry you called in and got a speech, but I don't want I don't want bad things for you. I, Dave's I love monologue. you and I, I want you Jacob, to win. Jacob, you see how I feel growing up? Oh, yeah, that's, that's what I got. What Rachel got at the dinner in a table. living room. Still in counseling for it. This is the Ramsey Show. Rachel Cruz, Ramsey Personality, is our co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. One of the things we love looking outside the windows of our studio is seeing all the people in the lobby as we're doing our show. It's on from 1 to 4 Central Time every day, and people come from all over and sit and watch the show, get free homemade cookies and free coffee. And the second thing we love is there's a debt-free stage, and people come in and we do their debt-free screams. And the best debt-free screams of all are those that work on our team. So an actual Ramsey team member is 
ready to do a debt-free scream with a better than I deserve t-shirt on. I mean, you, you're wearing the <laughs> colors and everything. I love it. So Tracy and Brian, Tracy Camus is our, one of our uh, leadership team here. She's a newly minted leader on our team and uh, is a senior director of supply chain uh, logistics, which means she makes the world go round around here and her husband, Brian, and uh, here to do a debt-free scream. Congratulations, you two. Congrats. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, right. Rachel. So you've been here about, what, three or four months, right? Uh, it was 90 days last week. Oh, wow. Okay. Yep. Very cool. Good. Good. Brian, what do you do? Sheet metal. Awesome. Very cool. That's a great trade. Mm -hmm. And uh, do, good, doing good right now, I bet. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> yeah, booming. Yeah. Good for you. Congratulations. So uh, how much debt did you two pay off? Four hundred and sixty-two thousand oh, dollars. Good my gosh, Tracy. And how long did this take? Forty-eight months. Forty-eight months. Wow. All right. And we don't ask your income since your team members are all standing <laughs> around here. Uh, that would be a little bit awkward. So uh, we're not going to do that. But uh, uh, what kind of debt was this? Uh, everything: student loans, credit cards, four hundred one k loans, consolidation debt. Uh, you name it, we had it. A leased car. Um, yeah. Wow. Yeah, in our house. Okay. And and, so, and our house. And our house. As yeah. she says it as a passing. <laughs> okay. And you paid off <laughs> your home. Moved. Yes. Okay. So tell us the story. What happened? Because I know you you guys moved here yes. to take this position. I yes. remember that when you were coming in. Mm -hmm. And um, so you moved here. And how did this all go down? Um, about in the end of 2018, I took a new position um, at my previous company um, in supply chain. And um, I... Uh, was it had switched the time that I was listening to someone else on the radio and on Sirius XM and my nice leased car and I uh, it was at the end of the day so I wasn't listening to her anymore and you came on because she had switched channels and um, I was like who's this guy from that has this accent you know from the <laughs> south I don't know who this guy is but he's talking asking people questions that you're not supposed to ask people. You're not supposed to ask people how much they make. You're not supposed to ask people, you know, how much debt they have. And you're not supposed to ask them all these personal questions, like this taboo thing. And everybody was just telling you all this information. And you weren't shaming them for anything. Or, well, I mean, sometimes you're hard on them. But you weren't, <laughs> you weren't like shaming them. You were like kind to them and trying to help them um, have hope. And um, earlier that year, I had received the largest... Um, bonus I had ever received at my previous company and I took it it was $18,000 and I took it I paid off all my credit cards and by the time I was listening to you it was already back up to 12,000 wow mm. and we um were not uh doing our budgets to get we weren't doing our finances together um we got married at a later um age in life and we decided that you know we don't need to do our finances together um and then you were saying that we did and so um anyway so a couple weeks later i got your total money makeover book I listened to it in like a couple days um and then i came to him and i said hey um i think we should do this plan and uh and oh by the way i have like a ton of debt and um he didn't know um so that's where it started. So Brian, uh, she had to tell you mm -hmm. how much debt, how much debt did you have? Was all of it yours? Uh, most of it was mine. Um, he, ha would you have a credit card and like a small student loan that you're hanging on to? <laughs> yeah. A, a few credit cards with whatever, one to yeah. two grand on them a piece or something. Yeah, so like she that. tells you there's this pile of debt. What did you do? Go, holy crap. Yep. She's like, you want to work together? <laughs> You're like, no, nope, I think I'm like, doing pretty uh, good. No, oh, I don't. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it, it, was, it was tough to put it all in one pot. I yeah, bet. I bet, for sure. Yes. A lot it of was, couples feel yeah. that. Uh huh. So what did you think, though, Brian, when she's like, okay, I want to work. I do want to work together. Let's, com let's, let's do this subject as a married couple together. What was your, because are you more of the spender saver? Like, what's y'all's dynamic? Saver. She's the spender. I can tell by the debt. Well, I guess. I don't want to always mark. I don't want to mark spenders like that because yeah, I am. I'm one, not guiltless, so. but I'll, uh, yeah, I usually do my research yeah. and plan it and save it and, yeah. and then do it anyway, but not just do it and then pay it off later. That's right. Because yeah. if you can't afford it, 
you don't buy it. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. that was in 2018. So mm-hmm. did you guys start pretty immediately together in that or pretty much? I think we, we started looking at the budget. Um, back in the day, you used to have to hand write the budget mm-hmm. and it was driving me nuts. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, I, but I took, brought one to him and I said, Hey, why don't you do this mock budget and see how much you think you're spending and I'll see how much I think I'm spending. And that was kind of what opened the door for us to see that, um, we were just, we weren't telling each other when we were going to the grocery store. Mm. I'm buying bread. He's buying bread. Everybody's buying bread. Or <laughs> every, I'm buying steak. He's bread. buying lobster or whatever. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah. And so in um, 2019, we started FPU. And um, and then we just started, you know, hammering the debt. And mm-hmm. um, I paid off the – we paid off the uh, – the lease nine months early and turned it in early and I got my hoop D mm-hmm. and what's funny about that is, you know, God has a sense of humor because when I went to get the title for my hoop D, um, they gave me the license plate and it said BMW on it. <laughs> <laughs> and it was not a BMW. <laughs> it's, not, it's not, it's not a BMW. It's oh, a 1999 fun. Toyota Solera. There you go. <laughs> uh, yeah. So we did the plan. Um, it only, it, we actually did it pretty quickly. Um, we got our, uh, emergency fund in place and um so you're debt free everything but the house oh yeah we're debt free everything but the house in 2020 COVID hit and he went out of work and instead of us being freaked out we we were relaxed and we actually invested in a a Roth IRA for him um two years in a row and we did really well that year because uh everybody was freaking out about COVID investments and we just listened to what you had to say and we're like well let's just see what happens and it went through the roof so it was cool yeah um and then um, through that journey, um, we, because of that, we became, um, we started believing in Jesus again, um, mm-hmm. or I started believing in Jesus again and what God could do. And I brought, brought him along. Um, and through that, my dad, um, also came to know Jesus before he passed away. Wow. Mm. Wow. Wow. It's a big oh. story. Yeah. With so much. Yep. And then you guys move here to take the job and sell the house back home. Yep. We, we, we moved here, um, sold the house, and took. we just decided that God blessed us with enough equity that um, we should be able to buy a house with cash. And so mm. that's what we did when we got here. So we are 100% debt free. And it's wow. awesome. What a great Gosh. story. Tracy and Brian. That's amazing. Boom. Well, we're proud to have you on the team, but we're proud of you too. Thank Both you. Both of you. Mm-hmm. Both of you. Absolutely incredible. Yeah, uh, man, there's a lot going on there in 48 a months, mm-hmm. a lot happening in your lives. And uh, it's very cool. Mm. Very cool. We're so happy you get, you're here, part of this team. You're you. obviously very skilled at what you do um, here in, within your discipline. But uh, everybody has also embraced you immediately as a team member and li- as a key part of the leadership team. So congratulations and way to go, y'all. Thank How's you. it feel to not have a payment in the world? Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Awesome. Yeah. Amen. Well, way to go, you guys. All right. Tracy Camus, our Senior Director of Supply Chain, her husband, Brian, $462,000 paid in 48 months and two people walking with Jesus. Count mm. it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, two, one. We're, We're debt-free. Free! Yeah. Done. Wow. Wow. A lot happened. I wish we had a whole other segment with them. I'm like, there's so many questions I want to ask. Man. Incredible. Oh my gosh. Incredible. Beautiful. Well done. This is the Ramsey Show. scripture of the day, Philippians 4, 8. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Bobby Knight said the key 
is not the will to win. Everybody has that. It is the will to prepare to win that is important. Well, rest in peace, Bobby Knight. We lost him this week. Open phones here at 888-825-5225. Alex is in Norfolk, Virginia. Hi, Alex. How are you? Hi, Dave. I'm doing good. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? Uh, So last night, my wife turned to me before bed and told me that she didn't feel satisfied at work anymore and that it it was causing her too much stress and it just wasn't what she expected when she joined the the job. She works as a a social worker um, while she's waiting to save up to go into her master's so she can become a clinical psychologist. Um, She moved here about three years ago when uh, we came here to Virginia, and she's had plenty of jobs since then, but they've never lasted longer than about six months before she would either find a better job or uh, maybe they had a disagreement at work or um, she couldn't take the job anymore. And we're, we're in the middle of paying off the student loans from, uh, from her psychology degree. And we just found out that um, my wife is pregnant like a month ago. So Congratulations. It's, it's all kind of hitting me all. Thank you. It's all kind of hitting me all at once. I mean, I'm very excited about the baby, but I was very, I was very collected when she told me about it. She was surprised, and I told her it's because we're financially stable. We're on a plan. I don't have to worry about knowing if we're going to be able to afford the baby or not because I know that we can. But if she's moving, if, if she's planning on moving to a different job, that it shakes my my um my structure, I guess, like it, it shakes my rock. I don't have, I don't, I know that we can get by on my income, but what we do you make get by with a baby? I may, I'm in the Navy. I make, uh, I, I make 40, 4,200 a month. Okay. F- $50,000 a year. Away. What does she make? She makes 23 a month. Okay. $30,000 a year. Okay. Yep. And we put 3000 towards her debt every month. How much uh, student loan debt is for, there? Uh, 57. That's what it was last month. 57000 Yes. Ooh. Yeah. Is that y'all's only debt, Alex? Yes. Okay. We thought it was a lot less than that until she graduated and we looked at the numbers and it was twice that. Twice of what you thought. Yeah, exactly. Um, what do you think? Not to like psychoanalyze her, but what what's the with the job changes that are pretty consistent with her? What what do you think the what do you think the thing is about that? So her the, her, the reoccurring thing is she doesn't find meaning in her work. When she works somewhere that she finds meaning at, then she she never complains about it, and she hasn't complained about this job for. She, she's been there six months now. She hasn't complained about it until the last um, two months. She she would she started mentioning that she was tired of training. She's been training on the computer ever since she got to the job. And every time they give her opportunity to come forth and like do something that actually deals with social work, um, she like trips or fumbles or doesn't get something right. And uh, then somebody gets upset with her. She's got some rude coworkers. And then she, I, I think she just can't handle it. And, and she brought up that um, a lady called her that was supposed to have called her a month ago so that they could fix something. But then they, now they couldn't fix it because she didn't call when she was supposed to. And she got cussed out over the phone and she wanted the job so she could help people. And she doesn't feel like she's helping people. She feels like people are getting angry at her for trying to help. Okay. How old is she? Uh, twenty three. Mm. Okay. Um. What 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 can we do to help? Um. I just I, I want to know. I I want her to be happy in her work. I don't. I I love listening to the Ken Coleman show, and I believe in 
like working at something that you feel passionate about. And I want her to feel passionate about what she does, but I, I'm scared because so much is going on right now and she wants to make this choice. Mm -hmm. I want to back her in whatever she wants, but I want to make sure that we're doing the right thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, there's two reasons that we work. One is to self-actualize and have purpose and meaning in our work and do work that matters. And that certainly needs to be the long-term goal. All right. The second reason we work is we're grown-ups and we have to feed our family. And you suck it up and put a callus on your hand and you do the work. That's the two reasons yes, you sir. work. Now, here's the point. What Ken Coleman is telling people and what we tell people here and have for 30 years is uh, you don't suck it up for 38 years. You suck it up for 38 months. But she has never once sucked it up. She has never once stiffened her backbone and walked through a tough time. Every time the wind blows, she goes out the door. That's who you've described to us for the past few minutes. And so she has a baby on the way and $57,000 in debt. This is when you suck it up. If somebody's mean to you, oh, well, welcome, welcome to the world. Deal with it. Suck it up. She has, a, she has, a, um, she has some problems with anxiety. And she wants to be a psychologist? And <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. We're going to have to do something. She's going to have to, at 23 years old, she's going to have to develop some toughness to be able to be a mommy and to be a grown up. And uh, I'm not saying anxiety's not real, and I'm not saying just pretend like yeah. you're not anxious. That's not the point. If she needs to see a counselor, fine, let's see a counselor. But, but this idea that every time it gets rough at work, we quit. You're yeah. never going to keep a job in your whole life. I own this place, and some days I hate it. <laughs> and I can do anything I want to do, but I do it anyway. And Alex, I think the and I think the hard thing, what you're going to have to discover is you can't control her as much as you want it for her. She has to want it herself, and her own journey of understanding herself and why she is the way she is. Why we all are, right? We all have to get to that point where we're like, okay, what? What has caused me to have these patterns in my life? The wake up call has to come from her. It can't come from you wanting her to have it. And that's going to be a tough position that you're in, Alex. You're calling the show for her, right? Hey, let, like, let, me, let me ask you something. Has she got brothers or sisters? No, she's an only child. I thought so. Okay. And so she's her daddy's little princess, isn't she? Uh, no, she had uh, dad problems. Oh, okay. So he, he, le he left the picture halfway through. Okay. All right. Um, cause this, uh, it, it, it sounds like that, um, mom, it's a lot of hurt. She like, has a lot, she's functioning she's dealing, out she's of a dealing, lot, she's dealing of, with a lot of hurt and a lot of her, when she feels rejection, she yeah. bounces Alex, probably yeah. from what you just told us in the last 30 seconds from her story. I mean, there's a lot of her stories she has to become aware of for her to heal and become a whole person yeah. and not to bounce. So I, so part of me is like, I understand why she's doing it, but it's, it doesn't make it okay. And so it puts you in a tough position. And so you're going to have to sit down and have a, and you guys have to lay out these numbers and just say, hey, for the next nine months, because when you have a baby, depending on what you want to do, like we have to be in this. We have to we have to figure out a way to pay down this debt so that we're not drowning financially. And you need to be and I want and I want you as your husband. I'm seeing this long pain term. I want play you to out. be. Yes. I want her to be long term. I want her to be in something she loves and where she's helping people yeah. and, and where she's not having to deal with toxic work co-workers i don't i don't blame her for that long term i want her to be there but short term we got to be a grown-up and a baby to baby to feed we got debt to pay off and um and we probably do need to get to the bottom of from a psychological standpoint why we're studying psychology and get into this that puts us out of the ramsey show in the books we'll be back with you before you know it in the meantime remember there's ultimately only one way to financial peace and that's to walk daily with the prince of peace christ jesus